I take very much to heart your imploring us against half measures. I think listening to both Senator Hawley and myself, you have a sense of boldness and initiative, and we welcome all of the specific ideas, uh, most especially, Mr. Smith, your suggestion that we can be more engaged and proactive at the state level or federal level in making use of AI in the public sector. But taking the thought that Professor Hartsock has so importantly introduced, AI technology in general is not neutral. How do we safeguard against the downsides of AI, whether it's discrimination or surveillance, uh, will this licensing regime and oversight entity be sufficient, and what kind of powers do we need to give it? Um, well, I, I would say, first of all, I think that a licensing regime is indispensable in certain high-risk scenarios, but it won't be sufficient to address every issue, but it's a critical start. Because I think what it really ensures is especially, uh, say, for the frontier models, the most advanced, as well as certain applications that are highest risk, frankly, you do need a license from the government before you go forward. And that is real accountability. You can't drive a car until you get a license. You can't make the model or the application available until you pass through that gate. I do think that it would be a mistake to think that one single agency or one single licensing regime would be the right recipe to address everything, especially when we think about the harms that we need to address. And that's why I think it's equally critical that every agency in the government that is responsible for the enforcement of the law and the protection of people's rights master the capability to assess AI. I don't think we want to move the approval of every new drug from the FDA to this agency. So by definition, the FDA is going to need, for example, to have the capability to assess AI. That would be just one of several additional specifics that I think one can think about. I, I think that's a really important point because AI is gonna be used in making automobiles, making airplanes, making toys for kids. So uh, the FAA, the uh, FDA, the Federal Trade Commission, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, they all have presently existing rules and regulations but there needs to be an oversight entity that uses some of those rules and adapts them and adopts new rules so that those harms can be pre prevented. And there are a lot of different names we could call that entity. Uh, Connecticut now has an Office of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, you could use uh, different terms, but I think the idea is that we wanna make sure that uh, the harms are prevented through a licensing regime focused on risk. Uh, Mr. Daly, um, you know, you said uh, that uh, autonomous AI is science fiction. AI beyond human control is science fiction, but science fiction has a way of coming true. And I wonder whether that is a potential fear. Certainly, it is one that's widely shared at the moment, whether it's fact-based or not, it is in the reality of human perception. And as you well know, trust and confidence are very, very important. Uh, so I wonder how we counter the perception and prevent the science fiction from becoming reality. So what I said is that um, artificial general intelligence um, that gets out of control is science fiction, not autonomous. We use artificial intelligence, for example, autonomous vehicles all the time. Um, I think th the way we make sure that we have control over um, AI of all sorts is by, for any really critical application, keeping a human in the loop. You know, AI is a computer program. It takes an input, um, it produces an output, and if you don't connect up something that can cause harm to that output, it can't cause that harm. And so any time that there is some grievous harm that could happen, you want a human being between the output of that AI model and the causing of, of harm. And so I think as long as we're you know, careful about how we deploy AI to you know, keep humans in the critical loops, I think we can assure that the AIs you know, won't take over and 
shut down our power grid or, or you know, cause airplanes to fall out of the sky. Uh, we can keep control over them. Thank you. I have a lot more questions, but we're going to adhere to five-minute rounds. We have a very busy day, as you know, with votes, as a matter of fact. And I'll turn to uh, Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks again to the 